So today we're talking about Abilify, which is the brand name for the drug Aripiprazole, a very interesting medication, very commonly used in psychiatry and usually also used as an augmenting agent to other treatments as well. If you're new here, my name is Dr. Sell. I'm a junior doctor training to become a psychiatrist. So I work on inpatient hospital units and often I will um, treat people who are suffering from an acute relapse of psychosis, maybe as a part of a schizophrenia illness. And at any one time I might be seeing you know, a handful of people with schizophrenia a day. That being said, Abilify is used in other illnesses as well, and we'll talk about that in this video. If mental health education content is something you're interested in, you can consider subscribing to the channel. I'd really appreciate that. But other than that, let's get into the video. I like to start my videos on medications talking a little bit about how it works. Now, antipsychotics in general, people think of them as like chemists and, and, and doctors will think of them in terms of dopamine blockers. But as you learn more about dopamine, you realize there's multiple different receptors, that the D1 and the D5 receptors are very different to the D2, D3, D4 receptors. But if you want to keep it simple, it's fair to say that there are a group of antipsychotics, the first generation uh, antipsychotics that are mostly D2 receptor blockers. There's a group of antipsychotics that are mostly uh, serotonin and dopamine receptor blockers, that's the second generation. And then there's this medication, which is a bit of a weird one, because it's not a full blocker, it's a partial blocker. And we call these medications partial agonists. So the thinking is that in psychosis, there's lots and lots of dopamine and that when you block the dopamine, you can help reduce the positive psychotic symptoms in a psychosis. It's definitely more complicated than that. And I have videos on, on the kind of biochemistry and neurobiology of psychosis you can check out. But Abilify doesn't block it fully because when you block it fully, what do you get? Side effects. That's right. You might be able to turn down the intensity of symptoms of psychosis, which is great, but there are some pretty uh, debilitating side effects to some of the antipsychotic medications. So that's why Abilify came in with this partial blocking effect. So what it does is it, it does bind to the receptors and it does block the receptors, but not fully. Okay, it's a partial agonist. So if you think of, you know, 100% being blocked, it'll block the receptor at about 60%. What does this mean? Well, it means that you can have the reduction in the um, symptoms of psychosis, which is the goal, but you, you don't get all the side effects associated with the full blockade. So you do get less side effects. Now, some psychiatrists, um, and from my clinical, clinical experience, it can be... Uh, it can, be, it can be argued that it makes the medication a little less effective for treating psychotic illness. But as with a lot of the other medications in treating psychosis, there's a bunch of other receptors that Abilify target. And these include other dopamine receptors like the D3 receptor and serotonin receptors too. Now we've spoken a lot about psychosis, but yes, Abilify can be used in other illnesses. So let's go through a bit of a list here. So yes, it's it's indicated in the treatment of schizophrenia. It's actually one of the first line treatments for someone who's presenting with a first episode psychosis. It's also used in bipolar illness, both as a treatment for an acute manic episode, but also to keep the remission stable, so maintenance treatment. It can be used in the treatment of depression, but it wouldn't be used alone. It would be used to augment the action of other medications in the treatment of depression. And it can also protect from developing depression with psychotic features. So if you might not have known that, but yeah, you can have a depression so severe that people develop a psychosis, like delusions of poverty or delusions that their body is rotting. And it can get very dangerous you know, with risk of suicide and things like that. And it's also used in uh, young people with autism that have a tendency to be a little bit, uh, well, I guess, to be aggressive. So it helps reduce aggressiveness in uh, young people with autism. And yes, aggressiveness is not a word. I meant to say aggression. Sorry about that. Now, how long until it works? Well, it's, you know, like with all antipsychotics, it takes a little bit of time. Some people do start seeing a benefit within a week, uh, but a general trial of an antipsychotic is, you know, considered four to six weeks at a good dose. And if there's no effect after, I don't know, three to four weeks, 
maybe even two weeks, depending on the circumstances, you would consider a dose increase. Of course, remember, um, this is not medical advice. See the disclaimer in the description. This is just uh, to provide you information to discuss with your doctor. Now, if it is working, it does seem to reduce the positive symptoms of schizophrenia. What I mean by that are the symptoms like um, delusions and hallucinations, particularly hallucinations. So it usually improves them. It rarely eliminates them 100%. That is the nature of you know this, this illness, that it's hard to get rid of the symptoms 100% with schizophrenia, but hopefully it helps reduce them to the point where they have no functional impact, that people can go to work, have meaningful lives, have relationships, all that good stuff, and that the voices um, don't cause any debilitating functional impairment. Now, in terms of the negative symptoms of schizophrenia, it does seem to improve those as well, as, as well as improve people's cognition. So they do better on cognitive testing and, and mental alertness. There is a subgroup of people, about 15% of people with schizophrenia, who will have a major response to Abilify, um, about 60% reduction of intensity. These people are called super responders. And often they have such a positive response that, yeah, they can go and have a job and relationships and things. By the way, we haven't really talked about it, but Abilify is also used to treat the side effects of other antipsychotics. So things like weight gain can be reduced. So if someone's on a second generation antipsychotic like olanzapine, risperidone or clozapine, um, which is arguably a bit of a different medication altogether, but I'll just group it for second generation antipsychotic at the moment. If people are on those, they can also have an augmentation uh, with Abilify to reduce the metabolic sim symptoms of those medications. So, um, for example, if there's someone who's getting a lot of weight gain on lanzapine and you add Abilify, that weight gain will be reduced. I have a video about weight gain in psychosis and because of antipsychotics and treatment options for people to consider if that's an issue for them. So please consider checking that video out. Now, if we follow the guidelines, um, the, Royal Australia, the Royal Australian and New Zealand College of Psychiatry guidelines for treatment of psychosis, the advice is that you try one antipsychotic for four to six weeks, if not consider a dose increase if there's no response, but have one good try of an antipsychotic. If that doesn't work, try a second generation antipsychotic. Um, and if that doesn't work, go to clozapine. That is what is suggested by the guidelines for you to discuss with your doctor if you are not finding a response. It would be very heartbreaking for me if anyone was to stop their medications or change their medications based off this YouTube video. Please make sure you always talk to your doctor before making any changes. Now in bipolar, this medication can be augmented with other medications. So things like mood stabilizers, I'm thinking of lithium and valproate and lamotrigine. They can be used with Abilify. Benzodiazepines is a maybe, you gotta to talk to your doctor about it if it's right for you. Now, before starting, Starting this medication, you've got to get it all done. You've got to get the blood tests. You've got to make sure you get your weight, height, waist circumference, um, and metabolic blood. So that includes uh, things like the cholesterol level, the that's called HbA1c, a glycosylated hemoglobin. Uh, so diabetes screening, that's what that does. Uh, you've got to make sure that your doctor has tested for organic causes for the symptoms you're presenting with because like mania can be a result of thyroid problems. Uh, psychosis can be a result of pro problems in uh, I don't know, copper metabolism. That's called Wilson's disease. You've got to do the whole workup before you just start the medications. Um, and once you've started, you've got to monitor. So every three months at least when you're starting with, the, um, with blood tests, monitoring cholesterol and things. Now let's talk a bit about the side effects. So some people with Abilify will describe um, postural hypotension side effects. That, what does that mean? That means like getting up from seated and getting kind of lightheaded. And that doesn't sound too sinister at first, but it can be pretty dangerous, especially if you're getting up very quickly and you lose consciousness and you have a fall with a head strike, that a brain bleed, that kind of thing. So you've got to make sure that you're getting up slowly. It's pretty easy to test if this is happening. You've just got to um, do a blood pressure with your doctor, one lying down, one standing up. And the reason this happens is it does bind to what are called adrenoreceptors. And for the medical students out there, it's the alpha-1 adrenoreceptor. Fortunately, the postural lightheadedness usually gets better over time. 
Uh, the other side effects, well, nausea and vomiting is not infrequent. Uh, vomiting is infrequent, but, some, but nausea is not infrequent. Some people can get nauseous with these new medications. Taking it with food might help. A common one is this thing called akathisia. Now, I have a video on the extrapyramidal side effects that's on my channel. Check it out. Uh, but akathisia is this inner restlessness. Uh, this also tends to get better with time um, as your brain gets used to the medication, but it can be really severe. And some people do have to change medications because it's so severe. Some people find it just very distressing, this inner sense of restlessness that can never be um, kind of uh, appeased. It just, it's, it's just relentless. But in terms of weight gain, um, it's considered one of the, the it, it's considered unusual to get any weight gain on Abilify. It does happen in, rarely, but it's usually a medication that helps with weight loss in people with psychosis. And it's also not very sedative, sedating. So often it's a medication that's taken in the morning because if anything, it actually is kind of energy now, if you're getting side effects, just remember, wait, 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 try, you know, don't just automatically give up. There's not an unlimited option, list of options in treating psychosis. So the a lot of these side effects do get better with time and it's worth just trying to um, kind of reduce the dose if needed with your doctor, uh, but trying to give this a good trial before you give up on it. The akathisia and inner restlessness can be treated. Um, you can, the doctor can, your doctor can consider things like propanolol or benztropine or any other anticholinergics. Those things tend to reduce that. Uh, at the, uh, you know, they, they do reduce uh, akathisia. And if it's just at the start, um, then then it should get better with time. Now, in terms of the dosing range, uh, everyone has their own dose for their symptoms. Some people can tolerate less and get better. Some people need more. The range is generally 15 to 30 milligrams given um, in the morning. Uh, a way to save a bit of money is to get the higher dose and, and cut the pill in half. Uh, and then, so if, if you're on 15 milligrams a day, you get the 30 milligram tablet, you break that in half, and then you get you know, a packet of 30 milligram tablets will last you twice as long because you're just cracking them in half and having one a day. Um, I'm not suggesting you should half your dose if that's not what you've agreed with your doctor. Please don't do that. Now, if changing antipsychotic, that's something that your, doc your doctor should guide in terms of uh, cross titration. And if stopping, it just, I mean, your doctor will guide you. It just needs to take time. You know, don't rush it. It'll, you know, reduce it over the course of four, six, eight weeks. Um, each doctor uses their own thing and, and, so, and it's kind of done to the patient's um, tolerability, tolerance, uh, to make sure they're not getting any withdrawal effects. So in terms of um, unique populations, uh, this is a pretty good medication for people with uh, kidney disease or liver disease. They don't have to change the dosage. Um, usually you can tolerate a, high, a, a good dose of Abilify even if you do have renal or liver disease. And even for you know, people in the elderly group, um, there is a, you know, a tendency to use the low end of the dose. Uh, you know, my motto is always use the least, the lowest dose that gives you the enough effect. <laughs> it's, it's not complicated, but, um, yeah, with people who are more elderly with slower metabolic rates, this medication has a long half life. So, uh, you would try a lower dose. In children, it, it, it is, you know, a, a FDA approved to be used in children as young as six um, if they have autism, irritability and aggression to help reduce that aggression. Uh, you know, that's a really difficult situation, but if it's what's needed, it's what's going to happen. In pregnancy, it has not been studied in controlled studies in humans, so it's con considered a risk category C. Uh, which means some animal studies have shown adverse effects, but not formally proven in humans. Um, with all pregnancy discussion around medications, you have to understand it's about the risk of uh, the medication versus the risk of not taking any medication. And psychosis, like schizophrenia, even bipolar illness, these things are at increased risk of getting worse during pregnancy because of the hormonal changes in the body. And so... If there's a history of mania or psychosis, it's extremely risky to be on no medication. In terms of breastfeeding, it is unknown if this is found in breast milk, which surprises me. I, I wouldn't have thought that a study to look for Abilify or Aripiprazole in breast milk would be that hard. I would have thought chemists have had a way to do it. If you're a chemist and you know why this hasn't been shown in the literature 
or if you know this is out of date and you have updated studies showing that it is found in the breast milk please uh, send put it in the comments below um, it is just generally recommended that if someone is on antipsychotics and and um, has a young child uh, that they they don't breastfeed that they use bottle feeding uh, but that needs to be discussed with your doctor or of course changing medications to something that is safe in breastfeeding you should also check in your state um, whether and you might have to ask your gp or your family doctor whether there's a perinatal psychiatrist that you can talk to for advice uh, they generally know very good and safe medications to use so yeah in this closing section of this talk i just wanted to say that this is a pretty powerful medication it's useful in um, treating of, of schizophrenia for both positive symptoms but also negative symptoms cognition emotional stability um, it's used in you know in a bunch of other illnesses things like autism things like um, uh, and mania as well it's really useful for people who might have problems with their blood cholesterol or diabetes who also have these illnesses because it can help reduce those and it's also very really useful for people who are feeling sedated uh, with their current medication this is kind of an activating medication so it, it's less sedating the final thing to say is that there is a intramuscular option available for this uh, medicine and it is uh, my opinion and supported by the evidence that if someone has schizophrenia that they spend less time in hospital if they are on a depot versus an oral tablet um, for a multitude of reasons so it's my strongest recommendation to be on a depot if someone has a schizophrenia that's resulted in hospital admissions it just keeps people out of hospital and that's not where you want to spend your life you know but uh, but if it needs to happen, it needs to happen. That's okay, and we just take things one day at a time. Okay, everyone. Um, thank you for listening into this video. I hope you found it helpful. If you have any specific questions, please leave comments down below. And I wish you all a beautiful day, full of love and connection. Call a loved one, tell them you love them, and uh, yeah, I'll see you all in the next video. Bye for now.